Okay, people of God, and uh, here we go again. You know, it's like, you know, when people seek fame, they are willing to deny Jesus Christ openly. And here we have uh, Lauren Daigle, and uh, it, it's, it's just becoming more and more prevalent that those in the gospel music industry or some of these Christian artists are coming out, ministering, singing about the Lord, and they're novices. A lot of them don't even know what the Bible is saying. And we're going to go through this article so you can see her say this with her own mouth. She's the one that sings a very popular song that's played on K-Love called, you know, You Say That I Am, you know, and pretty much the song goes, You Say I Am Weak, you know, I Say, I'm, I, I, say I Am Weak, but You Say I Am Strong and everything. So, never mentions the name of Jesus Christ on any other, you know, on that song or anything like that. But for those who know the word of God, they know uh, what this lady is doing and they see the grave falling away. For those who are new to the faith of Jesus Christ, who are, uh, you know, wonder what the big issue is or whatever. I want to ask you one question. In the Bible, which disciple of Jesus Christ that once followed him? actually turned on him and never came back. You guessed it. Judas did. Peter turned on him when it was time for persecution, uh, but Peter ended up coming back to Christ. Judas didn't. And what did Judas do to deny Christ? What did Judas do? Judas denied Jesus Christ and gave him up for the sake of money. For the sake of money. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ said when they were at the Last Supper, one of you is a devil. Why did he call him that? Because they would betray him. They would betray him. Meaning they did not want to be identified with Jesus Christ. They did not want to uh, uh, suffer with Christ so they could reign with Christ. They did not want anything to do with Jesus Christ when that time came because that greed and the lust in their heart overrode everything that Jesus taught them and Jesus manifested before them. And so this is what we're seeing. People being led by demon spirits again because to sit up here and say you don't want to be identified as a Christian artist that word Christian means to be Christ-like. So you don't want to be identified as a Christ-like artist, a Christ-like representative in the earth. And, I, and as we get to this article, you're going to see some Christian, so-called Christian comedian saying that, you know, people jumping down on her for going on the Ellen DeGeneres show need to get off of it and everything. She makes all kinds of songs about Jesus and she makes one mistake. No, that is a huge mistake. When you cannot even stand against sin and you come out and say you don't want to be identified as a Christian artist, but yet you want to go to Christian churches and Christian conventions and and and, and have your song on Christian radio stations. But you want to be you don't want to be identified as a Christian artist. So this is the same thing. Kirk Franklin and them doing Lecrae and all these other ones. Yolanda Adams, she came out and said the same thing. It's not Christian music. It's just good music. It's the same thing that. Uh. Mary, Mary and them have done in the past and stuff. And so what it is, is just because of lustful fame and lustful money. So I'm going to show you this article. All right. Just going to go through it real quick. After being in the spotlight of controversy for weeks regarding her stance on homosexuality, well-known Christian artist <laughs> Lauren Daigle is now saying she doesn't consider herself a Christian artist, but simply an artist. My question is, an artist for who? The world. James chapter 4. For those of you that are new to the faith and following Jesus Christ, please read James chapter 4, where he specifically says, friendship with the world is hatred towards God. If any man be a friend of this world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in this world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father of this world so in other words she wants to be identified as a secular or as a worldly artist 
Because if you're not an artist for Christ, then who are you an artist for? Lauren Daigle has a few words for those criticizing her for singing on Ellen. Ellen is, of course, Ellen DeGeneres. She's an openly uh, a lesbian woman. Over the past year, Daigle has become increasingly more famous performing her music on shows, usually reserved for secular music, including Good Morning America, Dancing with the Stars, and The Tonight Show. And I remember back in the day, uh, when the um, praise and worship leader for Joel Osteen's church, Israel Israel Halton or Houghton, he went on one of those uh, night shows. And when they, uh, matter of fact, I believe it was Conan O'Brien. And now he's a praise and worship leader at Joel Osteen's church. So when they, when they introduced him, they just said he was a musician. They didn't put Christian on there. And when I saw that that time, because I saw, you know, when I was, I watched the news at night, you know, years ago. And usually on the news, they say who they're going to have on it on those late night show programs. So I saw his name pop up. I'm like, man, this guy, you know, he's a, you know, gospel artist and everything. So I decided I want to look at the show and see what he does. And they never introduced him as a Christian artist. They introduced him as a, uh, uh, as an artist, just a normal artist. And he was on there singing the songs to earth, wind and fire. I knew right then and there, this is not supposed to be happening. It's okay. So it says over the past year, Dago has become increasingly more famous, performing her music on shows usually reserved for secular music artists. But let me tell you something. The world will always invite you on a show if you're not going to convict them. Okay. If you're not going to have a stance against what they're doing, they'll always invite you on there. Now, see, this is the thing, people. When Jesus Christ says, go and preach the gospel into all the world. OK, calling people to repentance, he said, preach the gospel, no matter where you go, preach the gospel. The only reason why these shows are going to bring people on these secular shows are going to bring people on there is because they're not going to preach the gospel to them. They're not going to challenge them to repent. As a matter of fact, those secular artists, oh, don't excuse those secular, you know, uh, programs are going to challenge those Christian artists about their faith. And the Bible tells us to specifically be ready instant in season and in and out of season. OK, at any time, always be able to be willing to give an answer for your faith. All right. But because of the fame and the riches, what these artists do is they compromise. And remember, I said before I said in another video, always be mindful i mean always be watchful when you hear people talk about the word evolving especially pastors and christians and everything some of them say yes I'll, i've evolved you know I'm, i'll continue to evolve that means compromise that means they're changing their stance they're lowering their guards down because they're trying to please and appease the world and have more of a bigger audience okay Okay, and let's play some pay close attention to some Jesus Christ always said, if salt loses its saltiness, is is it's worthless, it's good for nothing, it's only good to be trampled under the foot. All right. Also, if you if you don't if your light is not shining, you know, it's you become worthless. Okay, and so what happens is that what these people are doing. And those like her, and this is not just, you know, about this lady, Lauren Daigle. Hey, I pray she repents and comes around and everything. And, and hopefully, you know, uh, commit your ways to the Lord Jesus Christ and be bold for Jesus Christ. But what I'm simply saying by, by showing stuff like this is to warn people to beware of this type of stuff going on. Beware of the pattern. Do not follow people that cannot make an openly a strong stance for the kingdom of God for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says something very clear. If you are ashamed of me and my words before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father and all the angels in heaven. People are not grasping the idea of eternity and standing before Jesus Christ and having to give account for this. Because they are fearful of what people will say. They are fearful of what people are going to do or how they're going to react. And that's what the Bible calls in the book of Revelation, I believe, chapter 21. Cowardly. Cowardly. 
because they back down when confronted. Some of these ministers, they back down when confronted by these secular talk shows. All right. Let's go. In an interview with 104.3 FM, the host asked Daigle if she considered herself a Christian artist, even though her music is becoming more and more mainstream. I feel like this is what she says. I feel like those labels get put on you by other people. Daigle said. I was reading articles. I read them here and there. And one of them said Christian artist, and the other one just said artist. But I think part of me is just an artist because it encompasses everything. That's kind of how I see myself. <laughs> it's part of me. It sounds like double mindedness. Okay. And so the simple fact that you, you know, when they put that title on Paul and them in the book of Acts, you know, uh, even Paul says this, you know, he says he he, he gave up De uh, uh, Demas. I believe his name is Demas or Dumas. He said because he loved this world. And so Paul had to part ways with him. That's what we need to be doing. Part ways with these artists and these uh, uh, some of these preachers out here that are defending that are defending artists that are doing things like this. When artists yoke up with secular artists in the world that are profane, blasphemous, and you are anti-Christ to the core, and gospel artists are yoking up with them, then you got pastors coming out supporting them? No, we need to separate from them because they want the same thing that those artists are doing. They're covetous. This is why the Apostle Paul specifically says, if any man calls himself a brother and is an idolater, a fornicator, or covetous, Covetous is what one what others have, wanting what the world has. You desire, you covet it, okay? And that's what James even warned in James chapter 4. You know, you have not because you ask not. When you ask, you won't, you won't get it because you're spending, you're trying to get it for your own lustful desires. A lot of times people are saying that God made the way God did this. No, it's because of who they know, the record contracts they make, and who they're connected to. But then they want to put God's name on, the top, on, on top of all of that mess to put it to be like a, a cherry on top of an ice cream cone all right and so uh she says that's kind of how i see myself the 27 year old added that when she made her latest album you say that's when i was referring to her before she drew from a variety of artists okay so she got her inspiration not from the holy spirit but from a variety of artists while we were making this record, we were constantly studying the greats that came before. Aretha Franklin, Roberta Flack, Andre Crouch, Lauren Hill. There's just a plethora of artists that we listen to over and over, she said. And that's the reason why she's confused. Because those artists are ministering a certain type of doctrine, a certain type of belief system. That's what's in their songs. And so that's what she got her inspiration from. That's what her... Her musicians, her band, or whatever is getting all their inspiration from, you know, artists that had have one foot in the world, or artists that were, you know, known as secular artists. All right. Interestingly enough, the young artists did not mention. Look at this. Now, if we're Christians, and Jesus Christ says, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel." It's this article even says, you know, these are secular people writing. Interestingly enough, and so they know better. The young artist did not mention Jesus or God throughout the interview, sticking to general phases like faith while placing a large emphasis on the importance of love. And you know why they do stuff like this? Because those are neutral terms to use and they, they don't offend anybody. I'm going to show you something in the scripture. OK, look at this in John chapter one. OK, John chapter one. Watch this. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. It's talking about Jesus. And without him, nothing was made that was made in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Watch verse five. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. What is the darkness? People living in sin separated from God. So I want you to pay attention to the Greek word, what this means in the Greek. Comprehend means the, is the Greek term for kata 
Lambano. The word is capable of three interpretations to seize, lay hold of, overcome as such. Verse 5 could read, the darkness does not gain control of it. Or the second interpretation, to perceive, attain, lay hold of with mind, to apprehend with mental or moral effort. With this meaning, the verse could be translated, the darkness is unreceptive and does not understand it. The third interpretation would be to quench, extinguish, snuff out the light by stifling it. The darkness will never be able to eliminate it. Light and darkness essentially are antagonistic. The Christian's joy is in knowing that light is not only greater than darkness, but it will outlast the darkness. So what I want you to pay attention to is the reason why she's saying things like this. You know, faith and love. Those are very universal. They, they can be very universal terms because it does not say who you have faith in and love. You, we all know that they're twisting the term love to mean love can be between two males, two males, two females, a man that loves all five of his wives and everything. And it's just a loosely a term thrown around. But in a biblical context, we know what faith and love is. But you cannot have a biblical context without expressing who the faith and love is connected to. And she will not do that. And artists like her and people like her who are afraid to take a stance for Jesus Christ in the open, on the radio, on TV, on television, they won't do it. They back down because when they cower down, they gain an audience that way. They get an increase of stardom, fandom, Instagram likes, followers on Instagram, followers on Facebook. And you got all these deceived people that's going to say, I just can't stand. Christians are so judgmental. They should just leave her alone. She was she she was going on. There was supposed to be a light on everywhere. No, Jesus Christ specifically said this when he came. I did not call righteous the righteous, but I called sinners to repentance. I called sinners. I came to call sinners to repentance. What are we to do as people of God? Wherever we go, we are to call sinners to repentance. We are a, supposed to be a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. There should be something different about us. We should not be afraid to take a stand for Jesus Christ when we are poked and 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 trying to be instigated by people that don't know God. When they begin to ask questions, well, is uh is homosexuality wrong? Is is uh stealing wrong? Is is murder wrong? Uh what about those uh people that are in Hollywood that say they're Christians and everything? We are supposed to give them a direct answer. Yes, homosexuality is a sin. This is what the word of God says. I live by the word of God and I believe what the Holy Spirit says. Okay. Case closed. Next question. That's all it takes. But you got these artists that's coming up. They don't even know what the Bible says about some, but you're claiming you're singing about Jesus Christ. Or you're singing about God. You're on a Christian radio stations, but you don't even know what the Bible says about stuff. This is basic stuff that you learn in Sunday school. Okay. And again, that's why the Apostle Paul says, I will not allow a novice to teach because they're going to be ensnared. They're going to be taken advantage of by the devil. And that's exactly what is happening right now. Now, listen to this and let me let me catch up with y'all reading because I know y'all don't read on without me. I remember talking so much about let's just make sure that we make music that we believe in. That's pure, true sound and something that we love. And it'll transcend whatever, wherever it's supposed to go. But let's make sure that it's pure, authentic to who we are. So in other words, we don't need to offend anybody. We don't need to say the name of Jesus. But it can still be pure and authentic. Pure and authentic to who? That's the question. See, when we are ministers of the gospel, and if you're a singer for, the, for, for Jesus Christ, you're a Christian artist. If you are a dancer for the Lord, a praise dancer. So if you're a Christian, you know, praise dancer. There's nothing wrong with being identified as a Christian 
unless you don't want to buy identify that because you don't want the persecution that comes along with it. And I say this again, Jesus Christ made it very clear that the seed, you know, the sower sows the seed, which is the word of God. And it specifically says that those, you know, in that parable, he said the weed came and choked out the wheat. And he said, those are those who receive the word of God, but because of the cares and the riches of this world, it is choked out of them to where they don't even know what the word of God says anymore. The word has been choked out of them. They could have started off right, but the word has been choked out of them because of the lust and the greed of this world. Okay. Dago came under fire in November after appearing on Ellen DeGeneres show with fans criticizing the host status as an openly gay female. All right. First of all, the gospel artist shouldn't have any fans in the first place. Fans means fanatic. OK, you shouldn't be a fan of anybody. And that's the problem is that people are exalting, you know, people uh, like gospel artists or, or mega pastors stuff, giving them celebrity status, being a fan of them. And now when they get off, a fan is going to be a true follower. They're going to continue to follow that person even when they're off. That's why sometimes people can't leave certain ministries because they're a fan of the pastor or the bishop. Despite how many scandals he's been involved in, despite how many, you know, how, how many times she's out of order by leading her own husband, despite how many times they say things that go contrary to the word of God, no matter how many times they got Greek fraternities stepping in a pool pit, stepping in a church, or whatever, they got yoga in their church because of fan and stardom, because of celebrity status and stardom, the fan will not leave. You know why? Because they like being associated and affiliated with something that get, gets nationwide attention, worldwide attention. They like being connected, you know, to somebody that has huge following. That way, oh, I go to this church, you know, because that pastor is known throughout, throughout the four corners of the earth, you know. But they, but when that person, when that person gets off and starts teaching erroneous doctrine or starts mixing the church with the world, they don't leave. They don't leave. Because they got too much to lose. They got too much fame to lose. They got too much connection to celebrity status, you know, uh, 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 celebrity status type uh, uh, people, gospel musicians, uh, and pastors. They want to be connected to them. And so what happens? They, 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 they make themselves fat off of being connected and becoming uh, uh, celebrities themselves, want to become celebrities themselves. Let alone let them get a stage, let them get a platform at the mega fest or something like that. All oh, they they didn't hit the mark now because now they're ready to go, you know, uh, full blown into the world. Shortly after her performance on Ellen Dago, Dago appeared on the Dominique Nadi show where she lamented how sad it made her that people condemned her decision to perform on Ellen. You know why? It, it is so simple. You know why Ellen had her on there? Because they know that they're not going to stand against Ellen's lifestyle. That's why Jesus Christ said, and I love quoting, you know, saying what the word of God says. So that way people will get a clear understanding of stand with the word of God and stand with the gospel and stand with what the Holy Spirit inspired men like the apostles to write. Rather than going off of these cliches, going off of these emotion driven terms that pastors, that other uh, musicians and other gospel artists will try to use to try to condemn people for holding the word of God up to what this lady is doing and others like her. OK, and so I quote the scripture to show you exactly who Jesus is, what Jesus stands for, what the Holy Spirit stands for, because they are in agreement. And unfortunately, we got the wrong Jesus being preached today. A lot of times people are preaching to Jesus that just makes them feel good. The one Jesus is my homie. They make the T-shirts. Jesus is my homeboy and everything. Jesus is my ride or die and all this other stuff. Jesus is not a homeboy. He's not a ride or die. He's not your homie. Jesus Christ is a king. I dare you to go up to a king and go up to him and say, what's up, homie? And see what happens. Off with his head. <laughs> or they're going to throw him in a dungeon. All right. So um, let me see. 
It says, for me, here's Christian singer Lauren Daigles. They keep calling her Christian, even though she don't want to be called Christian. They, they keep calling her Christian singer. Lauren Daigles responds to a question about homosexuality and sin. For me, it was really sad that their outlook would be, oh, because Ellen's gay, she's bad. Yes, yeah, she is bad. She's a sinner. Okay? She's bad. All of us was bad. We were sinners. The Bible says that we were haters of God. Okay, we were haters of the cross of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we serve the devil because we were under the control of the prince of the power of this air. Okay, that's why Jesus said, I didn't come, I did not come for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. All right. So, yes, she is bad. And that's where it comes to the emotional appeal and getting connected to somebody emotionally. All right. It says, that's sad. It's so sad. They will explain what people don't realize is I went to Ellen and she is just a bundle of light. Really? Somebody openly practicing lesbianism doesn't care what the Bible says and is willing to confront anyone that calls himself a Christian. She's willing to confront them about homosexuality and lesbianism. They know what the answer is. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, they knew the judgments of God. In the book of Romans chapter one, check it out. They knowing, it says, knowing the judgments of God. Okay. They serve the, they, they serve the, uh, they, they serve the, the, the creature rather than the creator. Just paraphrasing. But read Romans chapter one. They know what the Bible says. They know that their lifestyle is going to kill them, shorten their life expectancy. That is the reason why if you go to the center of disease control, the ones that have the highest HIV rate are homosexuals and lesbians. They have the highest HIV rate in America. Check the statistics out for yourself. And let me tell you something. When I speak against homosexuality, lesbianism, covetousness, adultery, you know, uh, uh, polygamy, masturbation, fornication, all these different things. When I speak and call this stuff out, it's not to just bash or condemn somebody, but it is to warn them. And it is to warn people that lifestyle is leading people to the lake of fire. And you can turn from that. And Jesus Christ is the one that sets you free. I don't care what the world says. There are so many countless testimonies of people being set free from this lifestyle because they turn to Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. Sorry about that. But I encourage people to turn to Jesus Christ and, 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 and the Lord can deliver you and set you free. All of us that came to Jesus Christ had to be delivered and set free from something, from some kind of lifestyle we were living that separated us, you know, uh, and kept us from following after God. Okay. If Jesus came to deliver you, then he's not the Lord. But the promises of the word of God are for you. If you're struggling in this area, you're living this way. And so, but as Christians, we have to call sin, sin. We have to say exactly what the word of God says. I heard one pastor say, when you when you speak what the word of God says, you'll feel what God feels. All right. Now, I believe that comes with, you know, operating in, in, in faith. OK, in faith and what the word of God says. All right. So anyway, let me get my things corrected. They go at it. I can't choose whom I'm supposed to be kind to and who I'm not, because that's the mission. Right. Be who Christ was to everyone as well. That's not true. That's not true. That's why Jesus Christ says, I've called sinners to repentance. Now, yes, we we show uh, mercy and love and kindness to people. But that don't mean you condone what they're doing by performing for them. You don't get pimped and played by the world. See, what is happening is that these artists are using God's name to make them famous. That's what they're doing to gain notoriety. You think these gospel artists perform, are performing for free when they go to these different church venues and, and everything? You don't think they collect them royalties when they perform? All right. She may have gotten paid for going on an Ellen DeGeneres show. Who reached out to her agent? Whose agent reached out to who to book that show, to book her, her appearance on that show? 
Okay. And now we're going to get down to what is really happening. Why she really made that stance. While on air, NATO also asked Dago, do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? Look at his response. You, you know, I can't honestly sound like, sounds like Joel Osteen and sound like T.D. Jakes when he went on air. You know, everybody danced around the issue and stuff. Just come out and say if it's a sin, just say yes, it is. Don't try to say I'm evolving, you know, and, you know, we, we, there's always all kinds of sins. Just answer the question, man. You are a bishop over a mega church with multi thousands of people. Answer the question, yes or no. See, when they start dancing around that question right there, see, this is one of the antichrist weapons that he is using to confront Christians. To see who is on the Lord's side and who isn't. And when people cannot take a stand and they cannot say what they are uh, 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 for and what the word of God says, it shows you they are wanting to please this world. OK, now, if my video cuts off, I will be doing, you know, continuation. So sorry about that. You know, I can't I can't honestly answer on that. Dago responded. The singer added that she had too many people that I love that are homosexual. She continues saying that she recently has spoken to someone about the topic, but I can't say one way or the other. I'm not God. You see how ridiculous that sounds? And when you read Romans chapter 1, and I believe uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, if I'm not mistaken, look what the Apostle Paul said. Under the leading of the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that was on Jesus Christ. The same Holy Spirit that baptized believers and filled them and uh, is, is who inspired the Apostle Paul, who used to be a murderer. Now, can you imagine him asking the Apostle Paul, oh, do you think murderers will go to heaven? And he was like, and Apostle Paul said, well, I can't say because Apostle Paul used to be a murderer. Well, I can't say that. But the Apostle Paul wrote and said, don't be deceived. No homosexual, no covetous, no murderer, no idolater, no liar will have any place in the kingdom of God. So if he's saying don't be deceived, for her to say she can't answer that question and she doesn't know, she is deceived. So if she is deceived, then why is her song being played on Christian channels? People, Christian networks or Christian radio stations need to remove her song off their channel because a lot of times what is going to stop this nonsense and foolishness from continuing going on is for people in the body of Christ to quit supporting it. Even Paul had to cut Dumas loose because he said he loved the things of this world more. We got to cut these people loose. If that's what you want, Lauren Dago, if that's what you want, Lecrae, if that's what you want, John Gray, if that's what you want, Jake, if that's what you want, we want the world, you want to mix them in with the world. Cut them loose. The Bible says if they're covetous, if they're an idolater, if they're liars, if they're greedy, if they're sexually immoral, hand them over to the devil that their soul may be saved. All right. That's what the word of God says, people. That's what's unfortunate. People just do not want the full counsel of God. They just want the part that just makes them feel good. You know, Jesus is love. That's all they want. They don't want to look at the judgments of God. They don't want to hear about Jesus Christ returning again. They don't want to hear those messages. They don't want to hear anything that's going to convict them and challenge them to repent and get the errors of their lives straightened out about the word of God and be committed to Jesus Christ. They don't want that nowadays. Okay. She continues saying that she recently has spoken. Okay. So when people ask that question, that's what my go-to is. Like, I just say, read the Bible and find out for yourself. And when you find out, let me know because I'm learning too, Dago said. That is ridiculous. Amid the controversy, Christian comedian, I don't know who this guy is, John Chris came to Dago's defense. Remember I said, when people start defending these people that are saying foolish stuff like this, that are saying things that are anti-Christ and go against the Bible, they don't want to be labeled as Christian. They don't want to, so in other words, they don't want to be labeled as Christ-like. When the ones try to come and defend them, cut them off as well, okay? Because they don't know what the word of God is. Listen what this Christian comedian is saying. To Dago's offense, telling her critics, just shut up. This is the guy right here. So John Chris went off on people criticizing Lauren Daigle 
or sidestepping the question of homosexuality. Well, that's not him. That's some guy addressing that guy that told everybody else to shut up. And that's what happens. You know, when people stand on the word of God, the ones that want to be lukewarm, the ones that want to be lovers of the world, the ones that want to uh, go after the world, they're telling everybody else to shut up. You know why? Because those numbers of the ones going after the world are constantly increasing. And so they are becoming the majority. So they're telling the minority to shut up because you stand on the word of God because you're judging what somebody else is doing, which is what we're supposed to do. Hold things up to the word of God. They're telling you to shut up. Creflo Dollar told Christians to be quiet when they came against, you know, Snoop Dogg. And you see the kind of mess he's doing, you know, nowadays. You know, all these people are telling people to shut up when you speak out against the artists, you know, gospel artists or gospel ministers, uh, uh, yoking up with the world, inviting them on the word network. I got a word for the word network. Repent or close shop. Because all they just bring in anything and anybody on that show just to just to say something and these people had no desire to follow jesus christ and you know this you saw the r kelly special you know and that well i've heard about it and you know he was on the word network or some kind of christian program and this guy has been known to do all kind of profane things and still marvin sap recorded with him you know and, he, and, they, and nobody saying anything so now that this stuff is coming out in the true colors are being shown of these artists that people have been trying to warn about for the longest, but you kept telling them the worldly carnal, uh, you know, uh, lukewarm Christians kept telling everybody to shut up. Now when the full colors come out, now what they got to say. Lauren Daigle, I'm sorry, like hundreds of songs. This is that, that's what, this was that, uh, that so-called, you know, Chris guy said that, that Christian comedian. I'm sorry. Like hundreds of songs lifting up the name of the Lord and led people to the kingdom in articles and stories, Chris said. And one time she doesn't say something that isn't how you liked it, get out. So the one, basically, the one time she didn't take a stand for Jesus Christ. This is not about what Christians like. This is about the word of God. So in other words, the one time she backed away from the word of God because she was on Ella DeGeneres show. All right. And I'm going to break down his statement. Like hundreds of songs lifting up the name of the Lord. What song did she mention Jesus Christ about? Okay. And led people to the kingdom. Who got led to the kingdom? Who, who came out and said, I got baptized. I got saved because of that song and everything. How do you know who got led to the kingdom and who didn't? The only true way you're going to tell a true conversion of someone is through their lifestyle and their heart. All right. The Bible tells us to be unspotted from this world. Don't be spotted. I believe that's in the book of James as well. Don't be spotted by this world. He says in the book of James again, it says, repent you sinners and double minded. You know, draw near to God. He will draw near to you. So Chris said, and one time she doesn't say something that isn't how you liked it. Get out. Again, this is not because of what Christians, you know, don't like It's because that Christians that value the word of God and stand up for the word of God are willing to hold people accountable by the word of God, which is what we're supposed to do. This is how we admonish each other. This is why the Bible tells, you know, Paul told Titus, you know, rebuke people sharply and everything. Those that are practicing the wrong things or, or embracing the wrong doctrine, correct them, rebuke them sharply. Okay. So people of God, we see this thing happening more and more, and I'm going to close out with this. It's becoming more and more, you know, increasing in this day and hour, the great falling away, where people are doing just like Judas did. They want to hang around for the fame, but they're willing to sell him out for fame and money. Don't follow them, people. Do not. God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name.